Hi, my name is Vicki, and this is my Intro to Oceanography presentation on the geologic history of Iceland. Iceland is an island located in the North Atlantic Ocean east of Greenland. It's a relatively young island, only about 24 million years old, and it's located on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge as well as on a divergent boundary between the Eurasian and the North American plates. Now, because these plates are divergent, they are sliding apart at a rate of about one inch per year. You can see in this diagram here, you have the Eurasian plate moving to the east, North American plate is moving to the west, and you have the Mid-Atlantic Ridge coming up through the island here. Now, Iceland also lies above a hot spot known as the Iceland Plume, and this is where you're going to have magma bubbling up from the mantle. As this magma reaches the surface, it's going to cool down and harden, and it actually increases the surface area of the island. So because of their location, Iceland is going to experience volcanoes, earthquakes, and geysers. Now being formed from an oceanic hotspot, Iceland is made up primarily of basaltic rock, about 90% of it. And you can see in this picture here, this is the Sportifoss waterfall, and that water is actually flowing over the black basalt columns on Iceland. The remaining 10% is made up of silicic rocks, and these are considered to be granitic. So even though the island is young, the Iceland plume was formed about 100 million years ago during the mid-Cretaceous period, and this hotspot is considered to be the largest and most powerful in the world. And then about 70 to 60 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period, Greenland drifted over the hotspot, and because it's older and thicker, this actually caused the volcanic activity to stop. Then about 55 million years ago, Greenland drifted off the hotspot. It allowed the volcanic activity to start up again, and this started bringing the basalt lavas up to the surface where they could harden and form new crust, and they eventually created the island we know as Iceland 24 million years ago. So basically you have two main me mechanisms thought to be responsible for the creation of Iceland. You have the North American plate and the Eurasian plate moving away from each other, and you can see in this photo here. This diver is in the Silfra fissure, and this is one of the only places in the world where you can swim between two continental plates. And it becomes so narrow at one point that you can actually reach out and touch both of them. And then added to that, you have the mantle plume or the hot spot, and this is the place that's allowing the magma to flow to the surface and increase the oceanic crust when it cools. Although it's only a small amount that it's increasing it by, only about two centimeters each year. And then you have this diagram here. It shows how the magma is down here in the asthenosphere or the mantle. And then it is coming up and breaking through the lithosphere to get to the surface and create that new oceanic crust. So when you have two plates, in this case the North American and the Eurasian moving away from each other, they're considered to be divergent. And as they move apart, it's going to cause the surface layer to break. And that's going to give a crack in the crust that allows the magma to seep upward, as you can see in this diagram here. You have the lithosphere moving to the one side. This side is breaking off and moving to the west. And the magma is coming up and creating that new oceanic crust. And the mantle plume, this is an area inside the upper mantle or the asthenosphere that is so hot that it causes rocks to melt and bubble up to the surface. And as you can see in this diagram here, the magma pushes upwards. Eventually, it's going to break into the lithosphere and create that new crust. The new crust is going to be basalt because it comes up from the ocean. And this hot spot is an area of volcanic activity, and it will remain volcanically active until the continental volcanoes drift away from the hot spot and that will allow them to cool and become inactive. So today, Iceland is actually one of the only places not moving. Unlike the continents, it's not drifting, and this is because the hot spot underneath it is actually lifting it out of the sea and holding it in place. But remember, it's between two tectonic plates, so it is slowly being split apart. Now today, the island experiences a large number of volcanoes, and it's because of these volcanoes that they have experienced glacier floods and they're also experiencing high density winds that cause erosion issues for the island. 
Now, the future of Iceland, it's believed that because Iceland is gaining that two centimeters per year from the active hotspot, that the erosion that they're experiencing from the wind and the sea is actually being counterbalanced. Now, obviously, this is only the case if that hotspot stays active and is able to keep bringing magma up from the mantle to the surface so it can create that new crust. Should that hot spot die, it's thought that Iceland will actually subduct back into the ocean and disappear into the sea. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my presentation.